been a friend of Pastor Bill's and a friend of mine for many, 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 many years. 41. Oh. <laughs> oh, boy. I didn't know I was that old. <laughs> we never got past it. No, no. 39 and holy. <laughs> we, um, Rita is just, I think the way I would like to sum up, the way I think about Rita, and she may not even know this, but I, I think of Rita as my spiritual mom. Oh. Yep, I really yes. do. When I have something that I need prayer about or need to talk to somebody, she's number one on my list because yes. I know she is, has a heart for the Lord and she's very mature in her walk and I have so much respect for her. I can't even begin to tell you. She has an incredible ministry. Uh, a lot of it is ministry to women, but she ministers to men and women, and she is highly respected. She has a great ministry. Hopefully, you're going to be talking a little bit about that. Right. Yes, and even she has a book, and I want to mention that. I want to plug that for her. She is only charging us ladies five dollars for her book. So I would encourage you to pick one of those up because it will speak to you. I guarantee it. But Rita is from Holland. You probably most of you know that because Pastor Bill talks a lot about Rita here and there. Yeah. It's all good. Rita, it's all good. Uh, but she was uh, has a show business background, so that's kind of partly I think how we were kindred kindred spirits. But uh, I'll, I'll I'll just leave it there. But we love Rita, and Rita, I'm so honored to have you here. Thank you for. Thank you. Well, quite an act to follow, huh? <laughs> okay, I'm going to give one of my books away. Who wants it? Me, 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 me. Okay, closest. <laughs> Easy. Easy breezy. Five bucks and you can, you can take one home, okay? All right. <laughs> The only reason why I'm charging very little money is because I just want to replenish them as they um, go to the bottom, you know, so when they're finished, I would like to be able to order a new batch, and every time I do this, it costs me some money. So. Anyways, praise the Lord. I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the ministry that I have. It started out 25 years ago, and it's called Women of the Valley. So it was mainly ministering to women for a long, long, long time. Then one day, this guy appears, and he would not go away. <laughs> so many of the women were going like, what is that, you know, why? And we have, so I prayed about it, and the Lord said to me, if you take care of my Jewish kid, which he was, I'll take care of you. So with that answer from the Lord, I just could not say no anymore. And then after him, more and more of his friends were coming along. And so before I knew it, I had a totally mixed congregation. There you have it. But, so then I changed the name. But his name was Elijah. Yes, his, line, his name was Elijah. Prophetically speaking. He said that he really got so much more out of the meetings that we used to have together than anywhere else. And he got healed, he got delivered, and God really did a number on him so that he just, uh, you know, unfortunately he passed away a couple of years later. And uh, we all, but he had a family in us, you know, so we all knew about him and we wanted to kind of really be his family, you know what I'm saying? So anyways. So now, all these men are coming, and so Women of the Valley did this. I said, I hope you guys don't mind coming to Women of the Valley, you know. <laughs> and so this guy said, uh, no, we really don't, but then we, we changed the name anyways. And now it's called In His Presence. Okay. How many of you know that In His Presence is where all the good stuff happens? Yes. yes. Now, many of you know that sometimes we are far too busy to take that time to be in His presence, you know? How many of you know that sometimes we are so busy with our list, correct, that we go, oh my gosh, I've got 10 minutes for the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, it's happening, it happens to all of us. 
So no guilt, no condemnation, but I would firmly confer and tell you that when you make him a priority for a longer period of time than you ever have, and that for all of us, that's, I mean, I'm not putting a time frame out for you, but I know that when you talk to the Lord, and this is what this book is all about, okay? This book is called At His Table. You know what it came all uh, from? Every word out of this book came about when I asked God a question and then was gracious enough to keep my mouth shut <laughs> and my ears open, <laughs> right? So that I could hear the answer and write it down. Now, I am nothing special. Everybody is equipped with a mouth and two ears. Are you hearing me? So, if and so you ask him a question, what is your next line of scrimmage? Close your eyes, close your mouth, and start listening. They call it listening prayer. And that's why this whole book is all about questions I asked him that I really didn't understand. You know, how many of you can we read the Word of God and we can see the Word of God, but yet there's things in life that we don't understand. Yep. Unless you guys are more smart than I am. <laughs> I definitely do. So I know, right? So I was talking to the Lord this morning, you know, and I said, What do you want me to talk about? And he was telling me, he wanted me to talk to you guys of how important his word really is. And I'm preaching to the choir because I know you already know that. How many know that? It's important. I know, exactly. But he showed me a little bit of a different twist, so that's why I want to talk to you guys about it. I know you all know that the word of God is very important. We read it, not only read it, we pray it. Right? We pray it. We take the word of God. But then he told me something amazing today. And I, I know that we already know this as well. It's a legal document against the power of the devil. You know what I'm saying here? It's a legal document against Satan's power to harass you in your life. So how do you go about that? Because I'm going, yeah, okay, that's really good. Precisely the same way as Jesus did. Any temptation he got, what did, what did he do? He gave him a scripture, an Old Testament scripture. Because he did that, he was the New Testament, it wasn't even written down, so we've got the full, he was resurrected, we are the first, you know, he's the first fruit of the resurrection. What does that mean? It means that we're the fruit of resurrection that comes after him. Mm -hmm. We are the fruit of resurrection because he is the, fr the first fruit, so we are the fruit of the resurrection. I want you guys to know that there's so much stuff in the Word of God that can make you more secure than you ever have gotten out of it. And how do you do that? You just place your own name in it. How many of you do that already? Put your name in a particular scripture and throw it at the devil with your own name in it. And that's an easy way to do it. So for an instance, I'm going to give you. It says, be anxious for nothing. We all know the scriptures. Mm -hmm. It's not about that we know the scriptures. We know them. But I'm not telling you to know them, but use them as legal, um, a, a, as a legal document to the devil. So that's the, the only way you do that, is put your name in there. Say, okay, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known, you know, to the Lord, and then the peace that passes understanding will flood your heart, soul, mind, in Christ Jesus. 
Beautiful scripture, right? For years I looked at that scripture and I go, oh, that's nice. <laughs> we look at it like that. We think, oh, that's so nice. No, it's a legal document. If you put your own name in and say, I will be anxious for nothing and speak to the devil that you will not be anxious for anything and that you will just put your prayer and your petition before God and then leave it there and then the peace that passes understanding will flood you. So <coughs> this is Christianity 101. But for many years I've missed it. We miss it because we don't use it as a legal document to beat the devil up. How many of you, rather than being beat up by the devil, would like to beat him up for a little bit of a change? Wouldn't that be awesome? Right, guys? That's how you do it. You take that scripture and, you know, where it says, I have not been given the spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Many of us today, because of the time, we still live in fear. So we can, we can only do this, say, Satan, I, and put your name in there, will not live in fear. Because God has already given me a spirit of what? Of power, love, and a sound mind. And I'm going to be moving in the spirit of power, love, in a sound mind. So many times, you know, in the Word of God, you find that we have been given love. Love, joy, peace, kindness, fruitfulness, all these things. They are the outcome of the Holy Spirit in your life. Are there any of you here today that actually speak in tongues? Okay. I've got one. Do I got more? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I knew about you. I knew that. I knew about that. Let me tell you something about that. I'm just going to give touch on it very, very lightly and very uh, short. The Bible says this, that when you receive that gift, and it is a gift, so you can imagine any time you get a gift from the Lord, it's got to be good. Because he doesn't, he says that in the word of God, I will not give you, you know, I paraphrase it, but I will not give you bad gifts. <laughs> Hello? Because he's our God. He wants for you, you and you, to be able to walk in the ways that he has ordained for us. And to be really a Christian today, you cannot be a wimp. That's right. That's true. That's right. yeah. So, how do you not be a wimp? It says, you will receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So what is the, what is the thing about it? All we have to do, like we have to do with any other thing, is ask. Because you cannot receive anything with God unless you ask Him. And if, that's why I'm bringing it up to you guys. So you can start asking. And, you know, because I, you have not, what the Bible said, you have not because you ask not. There's a whole bunch of stuff sitting in that Word of God that we don't get the benefit of because we haven't asked. Actually, in reality, the Word of God is quite simple. And we make it more difficult. If you just read it as a book that's written to you personally to defeat the power of the devil, and that anything that's a gift in there, you can have. You can have anything that's in there. For you personally. Anything he writes in there. You can say, oh, this is mine. Start asking. Healing. It is not a special healing ministry anywhere, somewhere. Somebody that has a gift of healing. Healing 
is the children's bread. Can we translate that for ourselves? Are you a child of God? Yes. So if it is the children's bread, then who is it for? Everyone. I want you to know that you need to start taking the things in the Bible literally and totally for you. Because I, I did it for years. I looked at it, oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> no, it isn't nice. It is for you. It's real. It's something that you can have if you want it. How much do you want it? Do we want it? Do people want healing? Why do they run to the healing people? And there it's in the Bible it says it's a children's bread, so that means. Even a woman that wanted some deliverance for her daughter, Jesus said to her, it's first for the ones that know the Lord. And then he gave it to that Gentile woman, okay? We that know the Lord have accepted, all of you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, have you? Yep. Who has it? Who has it? You have it? You have. All right. Good. Who of you all were baptized in the, in the water? All of you, right? There's an amazing little scripture that says those that were baptized with all of you, right? He said, what is it? He said, when you were baptized, he, you put on Christ. You're baptized now, you put on Christ. How many of you have ever thought the outer coat of my life is Jesus Christ? Because when I get baptized, I put him on. It's that simple. It's literal. You put him on. The other scripture says, we become the sons of God, daughters, Son, through belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, if you are a daughter of God, what does that mean to you? He's a king. So what are you? If you're a daughter of the most high king, you are a child, but you are also a princess. Forget the snowflakes. Forget them. Because you are a princess, a king, when they have a child, it's a princess in the kingdom of God. Amen. I come from a country where they actually have a king. It's a kingdom. All right? It's really interesting because when a king or a, a princess, a, a, a prince or a princess gets born for 21 years, they get groomed. And how to act as the king or, or as the princess or the prince. They get completely uh, given to the parliament and presented to them at 21 years of age. So in other words, what I'm saying is you may still be in the preparatory stage of being that princess. However, that princess will be a princess, period. And even if she dies at six, she dies as a princess. All of us, it's the same. You become a son of God through your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And these are things that I just want you to think about. It's not like whole of the word of God is literal and a blessing to our lives. If you really read it that way, that you put your own name in it, then you can be blessed by it. Because God wants us to be blessed. He wants his children to be blessed. He doesn't want us to live constantly in fear. He doesn't want us to live constantly being bombarded by the the powers of the enemy and this comes in your life and that comes in your life and your son and your kids and da -da 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 -da. and whatever the enemy throws at us. He doesn't want his children to live there. He wants us to have victory. 
How many of you would like some victory? In your life? I mean, really. I'm thinking, you know, and uh, the more, and when he told me that it's a legal binding document, the Constitution was a legal binding document. Yes, still is. But when you go, and that, and that makes the laws of the land, the legal, legal binding document of the Bible, the Word of God, is against the encroachment of the enemy into your life. If you hold the word up to him and say, so far no father because the Bible says, I will not have that spirit of fear. If you overcome by fear and you start talking to the enemy and say, I will not succumb to the spirit of fear. I will not because the word says, same, and same thing will happen. He is our first fruit. Jesus is our first fruit. So what happened to him and what he did, it says it even in the word of God, it says, more of these works you will do. And he was healing everybody. Mm -hmm. He lived in victory through everything that the enemy had thrown at him. And we can actually do the same thing. It's really very important that we know that because I feel that the Lord wants, and, and I'm not saying that some of you don't already live there, but if you didn't, because I didn't for many years, and ever since I've been taking God at his word, power has come to my life that I never had before. Because it's literal, and it's literal for every single person that sits in this room, and you can actually, and you just probably thinking, but yeah, but you do not know my circumstances. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you a little bit about your circumstances. <laughs> Let me tell you about mine. <laughs> you can do two things about your circumstances. We can complain about it. Okay, guys, you must recognize this one. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Be honest with me, okay? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not grading you, but I'm saying that's what we do. We complain about our circumstances. And you know what? When you do complain with the words of your own mouth, you make them bigger. Yeah. You make your own problems bigger with the power that God has given to you in your own mouth. It says in the word, we need to start taking this stuff serious and we need to start taking it literal, you know? Because, and it's not, I'm not saying this, I just want you all to know that there is more victory to be had than we are having. This is not, let's beat them up today. It is, let's all rise up into the victory that God, in, through Jesus Christ, has purchased for us. Let's all live in that victory. Let's move in that victory. And complaining will keep you out of victory in a New York second. <laughs> I have known the Lord for many, many years. But when you have a little bit of that self-pity, complaining is very easy to come by. <laughs> testimonial. <laughs> this is a testimonial, okay? And it's like self-pity is a beast that can never be satisfied. Mm -hmm. So if and so, and it comes from the enemy, because it will never see the circumstances for what they really are, but they will see the circumstances from that little self-pity and poor little pity old me, and oh my God, what am I gonna do? God has already done it for you. He's done every, he's given you everything the Bible says pertaining to life and godliness. He's already given it to you. So you have it in your hand when you have the word of God in your hand. All I'm going to say, let's use those swords that he's given to us and not dip down into the complaining and the self-pity because God. I see, 
When I look at you guys, I see a, a, a victorious women with swords in their hands, ready to take on the enemy where he has been beating you up in your life. You all know, because how many of you can identify with this? It's always the same thing that happens to you. Same old, same old. Isn't God. It's the enemy. And when you get to recognize where it really is coming from, because I can hear that with my self pity, and so oh, God mustn't must love the other people a little bit more than me. <laughs> uh, this is always happening to me. Why? <laughs> Why is it always happening to me? Fun. Same thing will happen to you if you keep complaining about it. I promise you. You stop complaining, you start heading towards your own situation with the Word of God and you start fighting it with the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God. That's why it is called the sword. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Why? Because it's that legal document that when you smash that into Satan's face like this, rumba, he cannot go anywhere and cannot attack you again in that same situation where he's been attacking you for the last umpteen years. How many of you can identify with this word? How many of you have the same circumstances? And it's happening again, different scenario, different people, different faces, same thing. Whoa! That only means that the enemy knows your weak spot. He knows where your weak spot lies. Right? So don't let him cut back to that same weak spot over and over and over. Because if and so, you allow it to happen, because you're not fighting back, you're just complaining and cowering. You know, I look very, very, very tall and frowly. And I, when I talk and it's the Holy Spirit, I have power, but I'm telling you something, I understand cowering. I lived through the Second World War, not the first, but the second. <laughs> so, so we came out of that war with so much fear that it took the Lord a long, long time to really get to the bottom of it. Because sometimes we have a big mouth and we don't even realize that fear is there. Some things that we have and be carrying inside are so deep and so connected to our childhood that we don't even realize what sits in there. That's the ministry that we've been given. We, we see people and the Lord gives us words of knowledge. That means he sees right through you and sees what needs to be delivered. Sees what, where your hang-ups are. Sees where, where you need help. And that is so many times in many, many people in things that happened to us when we were children. Okay? And we think we have overcome, but I have news for you. Unless the hook that that produced in your life of the enemy will get rebuked and renounced and kicked out, that thing will be with you as long as you live. It's just the way it is, okay guys? So for your own selves, start <coughs> renouncing and if you have something in your life that's been in there for a real, real, real long time, realize that the enemy got a hook in you when you were very young as a child and that it's never gone away. And God has solutions for all of us. He has the answer for all of us. And even, you know, if you feel like you've always been afraid and you think that's just part of your personality, it's not. Because God has already said, I have not given you the spirit of fear. So if he says he has not given that spirit, that spirit of fear to us, it's not part of your personality. He would not contradict himself that way. Okay, guys? So in essence, 
the whole thing is, I want all of you guys to start reading the word with more of a personal, your name in it, and knowing that if you if you have fear and you keep saying to the enemy, you've got to back up because I have not been given the spirit of fear, you will be victorious over the enemy. It's by the words of your mouth. How many of you know that when you speak the word, it has effect? If you never speak it, it will never have effect. So sometimes it's crazy you can sit and talk to an empty room, but uh -huh. the enemy hears you. <laughs> okay, it's never an empty room because he's there right there to harass you the next day the way he did the last day. Okay, listening? So basically I'm, I'm just I hope you get something out of this but what we want to do today is pray for whoever wants and needs prayer you know Rose will help me I haven't really introduced Rose but Rose is normally my sidekick but she's a minister in her own right as a minister all over the Far East uh, and over the world and amazing woman of God so we would, uh, if you want to, we would love to pray for you and see what God would do. You don't have to tell us your problems. <laughs> we'll go, we go by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. So in, in all that, I want to say, I hope that you guys had a good day. I am, I feel like the snowflake of the week. So <laughs> I praise the Lord for all of you and uh, hope you got something. Okay, and come and be prayed for. All right? All right. Thank you, Rita, so much. Thank you. Um, and I would encourage you all, too, to um, don't be shy and just uh, take advantage of Rita and Rose being here to receive some prayer, one-on-one, two-on-one, -on -one, two -on -one, uh, because they walk with the Lord and uh, they have oftentimes do have a gift of knowledge and they can really uh, minister to you. So. Please take advantage of it. And thank you all for being here. It's been a lovely morning. Yes, amen. amen.